Hey everyone, this is James Morgan. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, using uh, CD Baby and uh, a few of the other platforms that uh, are the gateway to uh, all the streaming platforms, which is uh, Apple and Amazon Music and uh, Spotify, of course. Now, uh, as some of you out there know that have a catalog of music, uh, and you have a lot of albums out, songs, uh, you know, you're you're going through CD Baby and these other platforms to get on those platforms so and get on playlists so that you can, uh, you know, make some fraction of a penny, uh, some, some royalties in that uh, one income stream. And uh, as a lot of you have probably seen, actually Snoop Dogg did a, a blurb uh, press conference where he was talking about how in the old days you could put out a million albums and you you know you could make some money off of it. So the record label made some money even if you made a dollar an album that's a million dollars, right? But um, you know it's it's not that isn't the way it goes anymore. You have the the gatekeepers of music that go out there, and then you have these platforms that are streaming platforms and playlists. Uh, th that are catering to these playlists that are basically, you know, country and uh, pop, you know, pop rock and, and uh, you know, rap and uh, that kind of thing. You don't really see a lot of playlists with blues. Uh, you do see some of some smooth jazz, but not really with the jazz, but they're not as popular. That's not where the money is. Uh, for, for playlists, uh, people that have playlists, they want people to come and, and, take their playlist and add, you know, that playlist to their uh, iPod or whatever so they can listen to it. And if they put jazz, jazz fusion and music that's not popular on there, no one's going to really listen to that playlist. So, um, you know, I, I think you know where I'm going with this. So now uh, an interesting um, uh, number that I found out about, uh, one of the uh, somebody I know who's in the industry of helping distribution of music. Um, so he has a lot of access to um, uh, analytics of Spotify and, uh, and all that stuff. And he was telling me that it's uh, 60 million tracks. So you're going to CD Baby, you're downloading your album so that you can get on Spotify and get some you know, plays. I wasn't aware of this, but there are 60 million songs on Spotify that do not get played. And it's, and I think it's a year, 60 million a year. For some reason, I'm thinking it's a month, but it's a year. So for a year, 60 million people that have songs on Spotify don't even get one play. I mean, that tells you how rare it is you know, a drop in the bucket, uh, needle in a haystack to get your song on any playlists or even played on at all and then to get it added to playlists. Now, I would have been fortunate because I've been marketing myself for about the last five years on a daily basis. And I put, I'm constantly putting content online. And you really have to create a huge footprint for yourself. And because of that, uh, on Spotify, I mean, I've got 30, just on one song, uh, 30,000 uh, uh, plays in uh, two months. And that's great. And uh, actually went up to, uh, on the streaming charts, went up to number one, 30 million, 31 million plus streams. So, you know, not, not that's not a number, you know, as they say, when they're selling you a product uh, online, you know, these numbers may not apply to you. Well, that's that's just the reality of it. I've been fortunate. So, uh, uh, for instance, I just came out with my last album, uh, Soul in Time, uh, released on May 31st. And I'm joined by Gary Husband on drums, keyboards, uh, and uh Adrian Farad on bass, special guest uh, Eric Marenthal on sax, Joey D. Uh, Leon on, uh, Leon on uh, percussion. 
So the album has been doing really great. And it's due to the fact that I do have Gary on the album and Adrian. And, and Adrian has like 60,000 plus followers on Instagram. Gary's got 20. So there's, you got 80,000 there. Plus, you know, I have uh, a thousand plus. So if you get like 1% of those to buy your album or add it to their playlist uh, or whatever, uh, you're lucky, you know. So I, I've been fortunate because I'm playing with some people that, have, that are still relevant. And um, I've kind of transitioned from the smooth jazz genre, which I was doing for about four years uh, till my last album, Groove and Smooth, uh, with uh, Dean Brown, who played on the album and helped produce and co-write the songs, uh, basically created that brand to get uh, uh, perform at uh, private events like uh, uh, corporate events, weddings, that kind of thing. So there's a nice income stream there. Uh, I have a website set up. They see all the accolades, and that's really all accolades are. It's to let people know that you gives you credibility. So having established that and worked hard to get that to where it is and uh, doing uh, getting some work out of it, I've transitioned over into the jazz fusion uh, genre more, uh, which is what I mostly played up until about 2017. And I got into it because um, the late Dean Brown and I wanted to create some music that had changes and bridges and kind of harken back to the 70s when you were people were just playing from the heart, closing their eyes, and, and really, especially guitar players were breaking barriers. And so were bass players and drummers for that matter. We had Billy Cobham and Tony Williams uh, even earlier and, and uh, John McLaughlin, Return to Forever, Chick Corea, uh, Weather Report, and you know, the classic four, I call them. Um, and then you had, you know, Larry Coriel, Coriel, Eleventh House. So what I wanted to do with this last album was do the jazz rock fusion, thinking that, okay, it's kind of a, a time gone by and not that many people are interested in it. But I'm discovering because of the amount of attention it's getting. I mean, there's every week there's a new review on an online magazine about how great the music is and it's bringing jazz and rock and world uh, music into one and, and it's like it, it's like this newer generation wasn't aware didn't grow up like I did or maybe you did uh, on that jazz fusion genre so to them it's a new music and that's what I'm discovering they're going wow this is great guitar playing is great the drums the music is you know it's got all these changes in it and it's it's alive and it's exciting and it evokes a lot of imagery and so I think it's kind of a cyclic thing. I think, uh, uh, you know, now that I'm getting into that genre, I think I'm getting it to right point because all these people that are wanting to interview and that are doing reviews are like, they didn't really listen to jazz rock. To them, it's a new music. Uh, go figure. So uh, Having said that, uh, I did want to let everyone know that uh, Gary, myself, and Hadrian are going to be putting out a second album, which we're already working on. Uh, it will be uh, forthcoming in 2025. And the title of the album is uh, Bridge is Bridge to Forever. And uh, it'll be all original tunes uh, once again. So, uh, you know, we're just going to keep exploring that. And fortunately, I mean, a lot of the jazz rock fusion players are either passed away or they're retiring. So you have John McLaughlin who recently retired. You have him and Al Deviola, who's really going more into his acoustic nylon string music thing. And he goes out and does an electric tour playing songs from the 70s and not, not a lot of new stuff, um, new fusion. So people that go to that are kind of reliving that past. And then you have, you know, Alan Oldsworth passed away and just, um, you know, Chikoria passed away. They're all kind of fast going to the wayside. And there's a few still left. Billy Cobham, 80 you know, years old. He's still uh, just touring recently. Uh, Gary Husband was touring with him 
And then Gary Husband, he's still very relevant. Uh, relevant. He's always touring and playing with different bands. He's you know younger than they were, so he's uh, you know he's going at it. And uh, I believe he's a little younger than me. And then of course passing of Dean Brown, who was very uh, popular in the eighties, nineties. So I think uh, for me, finding rediscovering this genre is kind of uh, fortuitous because a lot of these people that have playlists of music have not heard this music. They've been so oversaturated with this pop rock and pop music, you know, the Swifties and the whole thing that's going on uh, that it's almost, they're, they're almost thankful to find it, something refreshing and new. Plus it's got that rock feel heaviness to it with some nice jazz stuff to it, but not too jazzy where it's, it's boring to them. So, um, uh, you know, stay tuned for some more of these uh, uh, YouTube uh, postings. And let me know what you think about the, this whole, uh, again, posting music through CD Baby and, and the other um, uh, gateways, gatekeepers to get your music at Spotify. And then you find out, you know, 60 million people a year aren't even getting one play out of it. Yeah, so it's, you know, how are you supposed to get your music out there? You know, there's, there's just, it's just oversaturated. There's no labels anymore, really, to uh, help fund you and market you. You have to do all your own marketing. You have to pay for everything, all your own uh, recording and hiring and all that stuff. So if you invest the time and energy into it, and I'm proof of that, you know, uh, uh, 66 years old, and uh, all of a sudden, I'm finding my uh, uh, place, you know, doing what I always wanted to do at a level that I always wanted to do it with players that uh, I could, you know, understand and get what my music is about. So, uh, you know, and then I see all these uh, pioneers from the 70s are all either, again, passing away or retiring. So I'm kind of feel like I'm taking it upon myself to kind of carry that on as long as I can uh, and to a generation that was really, it's foreign to. So I'm reintroducing jazz rock fusion to a new generation and they'll either like it or not like it. And uh, so again, go ahead and leave a comment if you like, let me know what you think about the whole, um, you know, getting on platforms, if you think it's worth it. Uh, you know, uh, obviously the pay is not there. Sometimes you don't even get plays. So where do you go? What, you know, except for putting your own website, trying to sell your album uh, or going to someone to distribute it, you know, or getting with some marketing partner. So uh, you have limited options, but there are options out there. And uh, I'll be happy to share, you know, any information I have to help you get your music out there if you're interested. Uh, I am actually coaching some people and helping them uh, get their music distributed. I'm also doing some uh, licensing, uh, movies, uh, video games, and ads, that kind of thing uh, on television and uh, uh, learning how to do that and get an income stream from that too. So it's all very interesting. Anyway, again, uh, leave a comment at the bottom if you like. Stay tuned for more postings. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Follow the Ghost Jazz Trio. That's my uh, brand that I do. Uh, uh, one of my projects that I do as an income stream. And then, of course, the Morgan Hadrian Farad uh, Power Trio, which is uh, taking uh, taking the music way uh, airways by storm uh, as of uh, recent. And uh, we're coming out with a new mouth next year. So uh, looking forward to that. All right. So everyone really take care and uh, talk to you.